and welcome to the Creative Schools Week Online Celebration 2021. My name is Mart Stassa and I'll be your host today and I am so excited because we have taken everything that's great about Creative Schools Week and made this amazing jam-packed TV show. So get the popcorn out, sit back and enjoy. We received a huge number of artistic entries from schools all over the country, which will be featured throughout our incredible episodes. So well done on all your hard work and creativity. This last year has been a challenge for everyone. So it's fantastic to get to see so many skilled, ambitious and creative young people keeping us all on our toes. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to the fabulous artists, creative practitioners and organisations who have worked with your schools. And another massive thank you to your teachers and your creative associates for all their support. Mashib. The Creative Schools Initiative supports schools and centres to put the arts and creativity at the heart of children's and young people's lives. This initiative provides opportunities for children and young people to build their artistic and creative skills. This year, our theme is Brave New Future, celebrating students' courage in the face of a tough year and looking forward towards a bright new future. So before we kick off, I'm delighted to welcome a very important guest to open our online celebration today. Please give a very warm virtual welcome to the Director of the Arts Council, Maureen Kennelly. Thank you so much. And on behalf of the Arts Council and Creative Schools, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you all to our Creative Schools Week online celebration. In the next hour, you'll get to see the wonderful work created by children and young people in schools and youth reach centres all across the country. This work was developed over the last three years during their participation in Creative Schools. I'm absolutely blown away by the creativity, the ingenuity and the positivity you are about to see. It truly is an inspiration to us all. I'd like to especially thank you, the children and young people who fill your schools with creativity. And it's not just this week, but every week. I hope all of you enjoy Creative Schools Week as you learn about the many other creative school communities across the country. Enjoy every minute and thank you. Thank you, Maureen, for your time today at the Creative Schools Week online celebration. Now it's time to introduce our first Creative Schools feature of the day. To kick us off, we have a very important news bulletin from St. Luke's National School, County Cork, followed by Corpus Christi National School, County Limerick, who created this touching role play film about a group of people in a care home. Underscored with a beautiful song, See You Again, the film was produced, directed and filmed by teachers Fanula Bramal and Zirmuth Hickey. Good evening and welcome to Brave New Future News. Tonight's headlines, COVID-19 has been pulverised because of the lockdown, vaccine and washing your hands. Everyone has a home thanks to our all new skyscrapers. Wars are illegal by the word of our president and there's a new way to travel. It's called teleportation. Hi, I'm here. I'm going to be teleporting to Turkey. This is in Turkey. This is a turkey farm. That's all we have time for tonight. Have a brave new future. Goodbye. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you. The things have been true. The average samurai here talking to you. 
have another plan. I know we like to get the road left. But someone told me it wouldn't last. Had to switch up, look at teams, if you see the bigger picture. So today, hey, it's hard work will ever play. Now I always see you in a bad place. A bad place. How can we not talk about family and families all the time? Everything I want to be sent to my son. And I can be with for the last time. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you Congratulations to St. Luke's National School and Corpus Christi National School on your fantastic films. Give yourselves a huge pat on the back. Well done. Next up, we have Brian Fleming with his I've Got Rhythm workshop. So get those pots and pans out and let's start drumming. I'm Brian. Welcome to Creative Schools Week. We have seven minutes to learn seven rhythms. So let's get cracking. Now, you are going to need a tin with some rice, you're gonna need two spoons and you're gonna need a bin. And you're gonna need at least seven hats. Very important to have the right hats for your drumming. If you can learn three out of these seven rhythms, pick your favorite three and let's go. First rhythm, we're gonna do a clap with the hands. This is the easiest one. So we go one, two, three, four, one, three, four. So a little touch here and then you cup your hands and you clap a big one up here on the two and the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's it. Easy peasy. Now the next one is the hardest one. So this is using your hands again but we're gonna do a clap like this where you use your fingers against your palm and then you use the fingers of the other hand against your palm like this. Now this is a very handy clap to get. Have you got it? Because if you practice and practice, you can get faster and faster. And then when you go to see your friend do a show and they sing a song and nobody claps, you can clap for everybody. Now, the rhythm we're going to play sounds like happy birthday. So the big ones are on the happy birthdays, like this. We go right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. A little slower. Right, left, 
right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right. See, I told you that was the hardest one. Take your time, you can pause the video and have a go at it. This time, you're clapping, and when you clap, if you'll notice, there's a little hole here. If you hold it up to your face, you can feel air coming out through the hole. So, when you hold that hole to your mouth, it makes a different sound. So, the rhythm we're gonna play with this is we go one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, got it? Good time to stop the video and try and get that sound right as well. So for this one, you need some rice and a tin. You put the rice in the tin and then we got a shaker. So the sound we're making with the shaker is like a train. Chicka chaka, chicka chaka, chicka chaka, chicka chaka. And the big one is on the chaka. Chicka chaka, chicka chaka, chicka chaka, chicka chaka. One and two and three and four and. So you're gonna need two spoons. Now you might think it's a great idea to get the biggest spoons you can get, but this gets a little bit dangerous having big spoons near your face. So I prefer the little spoons. You put one right against your cheek like that. This is another one that's very hard to look cool when you're doing. And then with the other one, you're gonna play it. When you change the shape of your mouth, it changes the sound. Now the rhythm we're gonna play with this is, we rest for the one and the two, and then we improvise for the three and the four, like this. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. You're gonna need a pretty sophisticated hat for this one. And you still need your two spoons. This time, it gets really tricky. You've gotta hold your spoons one between your thumb and your forefinger and one on the other side of your finger and you want to hold them parallel and just apart and then you pull them around like this so your arm is going out this way and the spoons are going this way and then you're going to put them down on your leg and you put your left hand if you're right handed your spoons are in your right hand your left hand will be over your leg when you go up and down between your leg and your hand, it should make a sound when it hits the top and a sound when it hits the bottom. So you go. That's the first thing. The second thing is you're going to do that twice as fast. So you can go. Double. Double. And you might notice the left hand goes down a little bit lower when you do the doubles. And the third thing you have to do with the spoons is you're going to put your left hand out like that diagonally above your left knee and your fingers straight and holding them rigid you slide your spoons down and land on your knee like that. And you put the whole thing together you've got slide duck diggity duck diggity duck duck Slide duck, diggy diggy duck, diggy ducky duck. Slide duck, diggy diggy duck, diggy diggy duck. That one is going to take a little bit of practicing. You're going to need a broad brimmed hat that will reflect the sound. This is going to be a nice big bass sound. So you need to find an object that can give you a boom sound. So you can try a few different ones. Let me see. I'll try this uh, basin. Pretty good. Yeah, I've got an idea for something bigger. I'm gonna need my glove though, it's uh, not the most hygienic. Okay, we're gonna try the bin. 
So we're going one, two, oh, that's the sound. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So your big sound is on the two and the four now, and a little sound just resting your hand on the bin on the one and the three. One, two, three, four. Well, okay, seven rhythms there. How did you get on? And have you got two buddies and two more hats? So you can put three rhythms together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put all seven rhythms together and I'm gonna sing a song at the same time. Now you don't have to sing the song I'm singing. You might have a song of your own, but let's give it a go playing this one together first. It ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the times that you do it. It ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. And that's what gets results. You can try hard, don't mean a thing. Take it easy, and then your jive will swing. It ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the times that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. That's what gets results. It ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the times that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. That's what gets results. It ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the times that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the ways that you do it. That's what gets results. That's what gets results. That was amazing. Next up, we've got a video montage of artwork featuring some more of our schools with a fantastic soundtrack by Laura National School, County Cork. That's followed by a short film produced by St. Bridget's Special School, County Westmeath. Happy to be back is the title of this high energy music video to Pharrell Williams, Happy. Choreographed by Rose Elizabeth Carey and performed by the whole school, this will get your toes tapping. Say love. 
amazing stuff. Congratulations to all the schools for their fascinating range of visual art. And what a great film by St. Bridget's Special School. And last but not least, to Laura National School for that amazing song written by the pupils and produced by GMC Beats. Now it's time to pop over to Tulka in Galway and watch some of their amazing arts and education work. This film is about their Good Yarn project about Galway's famous maritime past, which was facilitated by Jojo Hines, Jennifer Cunningham and Joanna McGlynn. Do you think it's, it's okay? Yeah. Thanks. Look at me, it looks brilliant. Oh, are we putting boats on as well, guys? Because I do the donkeys as well. Yeah, you do the donkeys. That was already done. We went on a bus to Galway to visit Tulka and we looked at loads of art pictures. I thought the robot was really cool. Art where all the pictures were put together to make one big story was also really cool. When Miss Tepe said it's an art gallery we were going to, I thought it, we'd be looking at art. But then like we done more than just art, it was a lot of acting and playing games and everything, so it was really fun. We did a thing about passing the wool, you had to make a big, massive story. The wool was the trail of where the boat was going. When it was all finished, it was like a big spider web. As Jennifer was here, we're learning about narrative stories. So once upon a time, there was a pirate who lived in Kinvara in the 1600s. Elena. He liked to smuggle things like liquors, tea, and other very expensive. Like cracking that was 20 times the time. 20 times the size of this. Jennifer asked us if we were a boat, what type would we be? And we had to draw that type yeah. that we printed. I just like having all Remember what Jennifer said to overlap them like that a tiny bit. Then up to you. And we went on to the middle. We had the battle between the smugglers, authorities, and then we had a few sea monsters. There was a rainbow monster. It can't survive in seawater though. The painting was a story too. Jennifer was teaching us how to strokes of paint, how to mix colours. You're doing the middle, do the whites, and then in the end, when the police lost and the smugglers won, the smuggler was like, why do I really want to smuggle anymore? It's really no use, it's just hurting other people. So he became good and he actually became a policeman. Jojo spoke about some of the history in Kinvara and in relation to the wool theme, a smuggling story and the history of smuggling was introduced. We've done this print art with her, so we print a picture onto these wooden counties in Ireland. We got to use the real proper acrylic paint, which is really cool. We're starting with the background, okay? If you're going to do water, what colours could you use? Blue, 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 blue. Yeah, 
doing our styrofoam and we've kind of printed it on what we wanted with the pencil. That's clear. Um, yeah? Yeah. Can I get everybody's ears for a minute? You can see the ears. These small rollers, these are the rollers you put in the When you get an opportunity with a group of professionals to come into the school, it gives the teacher a chance to learn from it and to bring it forward. And this one, it prints on your back. So it looks a bit kind of scary. I'm gonna like roll it like right here so I don't get this. But sometimes we don't empower the children because they are so creative. I think that's important in the English curriculum and it's important in our schools as well. That's based on fact but it's also fiction. So the children can create the story and they've actually become part of the story. It's I thought art was always paint, but now I know you can do it through like moving and dancing. We're making the play and like we're doing different things. We're smugglers and we're a boat and we're waves. The English soldiers come in and we look for the Irish prisoners that are like smuggling all the wool. In return for the wool, they got tobacco, wine and brandy. It was very beneficial for children, school and the other teachers as well to see what we can do with children. You had to express yourself with Irish. It was really important so you don't keep all your feelings bottled up inside. You can't go wrong with Irish because everything you like to do is it's special to you. Like. It's a piece of Irish. <laughs> A big thank you to Tulka for that great film and giving us some valuable insight into their work. Up next is Glen McQuinn National School, County Donegal with their drumming workshop facilitated by Ronan McKee. The pupils compose their own rhythms and worked a story into their music. That'll be followed by Gert Skehi National School, County Mayo. Their third and fourth class participated in a radio takeover project with their local radio station. They compiled over an hour of footage of music, poems, weather updates and stories that were broadcast on Claire Morris Community Radio in December 2020. This is just a small snippet. Can anybody remember the name of the instrument that we are playing? Djembe. Djembe. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where does this drum come from? Africa. Africa. Brilliant. Well, and in Africa, what are people doing when dancing. their drums are playing? Dancing. They're dancing. Oh. You're absolutely right. You can remember the names of the different sounds that we play on the drum. We are playing, we are playing bass, tone, tone. We're playing bass and we're playing tone. Where do we play a bass, Josh? In the center. In the center. Where do we play the tone, Han? On the outside of the drum. Can you show it? Very good. We've learned different rhythms from different dances in Africa and then we got creative, didn't we, on one of our sessions and we created our own rhythm. What was the rhythm that we created? Glen McQuinn National School. Glen McQuinn National School. What one of you I got? I like bananas. I like bananas. I remember the very first one we learned was the questions. The questions and the answers. That's right. We did our questions and our answers. You're absolutely right. Can you remember what they were? Are you ready for this? Oh, oh yes. yes. Are you sure? Oh yes. Are you sure? Oh yes. Here we go. Brilliant. Ireland, I enjoyed. I like bananas and I like the drumming because I like the way you get your hands at you and because the boys said you can get money if you get your hands at you. That's what I like about the drums. <laughs> I like bananas. I like them when it's super fun. 
Oh, we did these sticks. Watch my hands drop, let's drop together. One, two, three, four. Okay, and again. One, two, three, four. Your hands get sore when you jump, and your hands get itchy. Um, your hands get really tired. Do they? Yeah. Your hands just like flop, 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 and flop. <laughs> The thing that I don't like that I like bananas because it's very hard. It's like at the end bananas you do you have to put one hand up high and one hand up low. That's hard to do. I I feel it hard, was hard because you had to go really fast. Um, it's hard when we are learning a new um song because it's tricky and you don't know all the words and the beats to it. I like how we can make up new beats on the drums. I was gonna say I like that too. Okay. Beats on the drums. <laughs> the same thing. I like knew that um, I like bananas. Did so. you? Okay. So you had to make up some words and then put a rhythm to it, and that's what you were doing. And did you join all of those sentences together then to make yeah. the piece? Yeah. yeah. Glen National School. Well, listen. Let's see how slow these bass notes are. I Give yourselves a big clap. Well done. Thank you so much. National School Takeover. We are third and fourth class, and we have had great fun with this project for creative schools. News, 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 the news on now. News, 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 the news on now. Hello. My name is Holly. I'm here today with the news. Here are the top three stories. We are building a new extension, but unfortunately, a piece of paper blew in, and now all the builders have paper cuts. The extension will take longer than expected. Across the road, aliens landed and brought a giant army, including machines to turn the four teachers into cranky babies. The students took over the school because the teachers are now babies, and turned it into an ice cream store. That's it for me. Now, if you excuse me, I have an ice cream store to run. And in the meantime, you can get to the boring weather. Quack, 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 the rain's here. Quack, 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 the rain is out. Quack, quack, the rain is out. Quack. Hey, I am not boring. Oh, anyway, hello, my name is Grace, and I am doing the weather report. Now on the west side of the country, on Tuesday, there will be a slight chance of Mrs. Hurricane Tortella. So all of the animals will be washed up into the air, especially donkeys. On Wednesday, there will be rain and clouds and a massive chance of boredom in schools. Or just go outside and get drenched. Your choice. And on Thursday, it will be sunny and blah, 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 you get the point. And on Friday, there will be a slight chance of rain like Wednesday. And on Saturday and Sunday, it will be sunny. So parents, even though your kids is glued onto their devices, don't force them off it. And that's the weather report. Okay, are we done now? Quack, 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 the rain's here. Quack, 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 the rain is out. Quack, quack, the rain is out. Quack. News, 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 the news is over now. some advice on how to stay safe on the farm while working with animals. Now I'm going to be talking to Owen about the safe animal safety. Thanks Indra. Farms can be very dangerous. Lots of things can be. To start us with we will talk about animals. If you were to raise an animal on the farm which would it be? The most dangerous animal on the farm would probably be a bull. If you would rate the bull one out of ten, what would it be? I would probably rate it nine out of ten. What type of cattle have killed this, the most people this year? Would you believe heifers actually killed the most people this year with their kicks and pucks? Thanks, Owen. Now we will be talking to Glenn, the tractor expert. Thanks, and then Owen. Any tractor can be dangerous. When kids are on the farm, they should be careful of any tractors. 
and adults should be watching out for anything strange for safety at all time. What was your scariest experience on the farm? Well, Enda, when I was nearly trampled by a cow is the scariest time on the farm. Amazing submissions by Glen McQuinn National School and Gort Skehe National School. Tabulabus more till sa agir fad. Now we have Ashling Byrne and Naomi Cal with their drama improvisation workshop. Let's check them out. Hi everyone, my name is Naomi. I work as a creative associate for the Creative Schools Project. I help schools by linking them with artists and giving them ideas of different creative things they can do. I also teach drama. My classes help people to become more confident and to express themselves. I've written plays for the groups that I've worked with and acted and directed in both theatre and film. Two years ago, I had a fantastic experience of directing a production of Romeo and Juliet in a beautiful theatre in Italy, which you can see here. Hi everyone, my name is Ashling. I'm a theatre maker and a drama facilitator and like Naomi, I also work with the Creative Schools programme as a creative associate. I love theatre because I think the stage can be a very powerful platform for telling people's stories. I make a lot of documentary theatre, which is plays inspired by people's real lives and real experiences with a group called Talking Shop. And I also make a lot of theatre with people with disabilities with a group called Run of the Mill. Usually I would be in workshops coming up with ideas or in a rehearsal room working with a lot of actors or I might be in the theatre itself working with loads of other people like designers, technicians and crew to help get the show up and running. There's a lot of technical work that goes into making a play and making sure it goes all right on the night. So we have to work very hard as a team to make sure it all comes together. We use a lot of set and sound and even film in our productions. So there's lots of really important jobs in theatre that are very technical and not about performing at all. The thing that I love the most about theatre, I would say, is that it's live. So every show is a little bit different and a little bit unique, which is very nerve wracking because uh, you're hoping it all goes OK. But it's also what makes it very exciting. At the moment, I'm home like everybody else. So I'm working on a new play that I'm writing, but I'm excited for when the theatres reopen eventually. So today, Ashling and I are going to show you four different drama exercises which you can do at home. These exercises are all based on improvisation, which means making it up on the spot. So you can do these exercises with one other person or with a couple of other people in your family. These exercises can be a lot of fun if you're looking for something to do or if you're feeling a bit bored. And they can be good fun to play in video chats with your friends too. These exercises are, we're going to take you through are used in the theatre sometimes as warm-ups for actors or to help us come up with ideas for stories or short scenes. It's important to say also that Naomi and I are going to play these on the spot. Isn't that right, Naomi? That's right. We want to give you guys a proper demonstration, so we really don't know what we're about to say or what's going to unfold, just like in live performance. So the first exercise we're going to do is called word association. I'm going to start by saying a word. And then Ashling is going to say a word that reminds her of the word that I said, and this continues on. So let's give it a go. Car. Driver. Boy. Girl. Friends. Playing. Outside. Trees. Green. Grass. Soft. Heart. Table. Chair. Sitting. Down. 
So that's word association. We're now going to move on to one word story. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say one word each at a time, but this time we're going to try and tell a story. And it really doesn't matter what you come up with, just give it a go. Once upon a time, there was a group of friends called the Get Along Gang. <laughs> they loved getting along. They played games together every single day. One day, a funny incident happened. They all fell down a hole. So as you can see, that can go absolutely anywhere. So it's amazing what kind of stories you can come up with using just one word at a time. So the last exercise we're going to do is called yes and. The main thing you need to remember with this exercise is to start each sentence saying the words yes and. And to make it a bit more interesting, Ashling is going to start by giving a kind of a prompt sentence. So this is a conversation between two people and in drama you're always trying to make things as interesting and dramatic as possible. So the prompt sentence I'm going to use is I can't believe we just dot dot dot. Okay. I can't believe we just left George by himself in that hole in the middle of the forest. Yes, and he must be so afraid right now. Yes, and gosh, that probably wasn't very nice of us to do that. Yes, and maybe this will be a good learning experience for him. Yes, I mean, he is total scaredy cat. Yes, and what happens if he can't get back out? Yes, and I hadn't actually thought of that, and it is getting dark. Yes, and maybe maybe we should go back. Yes, and perhaps find a rope. Yes, and where is that branch that Mary had? Yes, and I can see that it's starting to get a little bit dark, so maybe we'll just come back for him in the morning. Yes, and are you being serious? We can't just leave him there in the hole. Yes, and it was your idea in the first place that we run off on him. Yes, and you were telling me that you're planning to go home and leave him there. Yes, and I want to look after my own safety first. Yes, and he's our friend. He's probably terrified. And yes, and what happens if we all get stuck in the hole and then we'll all be in a bad situation? Yes, and at least he won't be there by himself and we can have a great party there. Yes, and I don't really fancy having a party in the middle of a forest in a dark hole. Yes, okay. why not? Like, it could be a good laugh. <laughs> yes, and there you have it, a live improvised scene. You can have a lot of fun with this one and it really doesn't matter what you come up with. It's all about just getting your imagination going. Yes, so thank you very much for listening to us and we really hope you have great fun at home using these drama exercises to come up with your own stories and improvisations. Thanks for watching. Thanks very much. Bye. Well, that was great fun. A big thank you to Ashling and Naomi for such a fantastic workshop. Now it's time to introduce our next Creative Schools feature from North Monastery Primary School, County Cork, who came up with the idea of an alien visiting Cork during lockdown. This is the Mandalorian.
What an amazing submission by North Monastery Primary School. A huge well done to those involved. And sure, if an alien was going to come to Earth, why not Cork? Now, I'm delighted to be joined in studio virtually by well-known Irish designer, Sarcha O'Reilly. Sarcha, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's begin by taking a look back. When and how did you decide that you wanted to be a designer? Okay, well, thank you for having me first off. And I decided I wanted to be a designer. I think when I was about a teenager, art was all my, always my first kind of love. And like leaned more to the creative side of things because I wasn't very academic I have to be honest so art was like my favorite thing and I always loved clothes and getting dressed up and I was always mesmerized by my mum's wardrobe so when I found out because I didn't really know that such a job existed I guess until I was around 13 14 you know and so when I figured out that that job existed that's that was my aim in life then. I wonder were there any early signs did you love dressing up your teddies and your dolls when you were a young girl? Yeah loved all that and I also loved dressing up myself I used to walk around the house in my mum's wedding dress, I think, and hats and everything. So um, I was just always fascinated with mm -hmm. clothes and that kind of idea of escaping and ceremony through clothing, you know. What steps did you take? Um, so I studied, I went to London and I studied fashion design in, oh, well, actually I interned for a little in Ireland um before I kind of took the leap to go and study in London so I studied in third level in fashion design in central St Martin's I was lucky enough to be part of the um, final fashion show at the end of your degree um, and I was really lucky in that I got a lot of press so a lot of big magazines like Italian Vogue and um, a lot of stylists so a lot of industry people um were really drawn to the collection that I created because I guess it was so different at the time. Mm -hmm. And just from there, I started getting um, a lot of press. So, um, you know, stylists would borrow my pieces to shoot for editorials for magazines like Vogue, ID, Days and Confused. And then I also started to get a lot of celebrity commissions. So Lady Gaga was the first celebrity her stylist commissioned me straight out of college to make design a piece for the VMAs which she didn't end up wearing it we designed it she made it but what you don't realize when you're first starting out is that these huge celebrities you know commission like 10 or 12 things so I kind of learned very quickly that you know they might commission loads of things but they don't always wear it. but eventually I think six months later she um, or something and um, that we made for her um, and then she said her name on um, the Graham Norton show and then from there on it, the brand really kind of started to take off. It's been years of hard work and dedication to get to the point that you're at now and I'm sure there have been very tough years and setbacks along the way but do you think those setbacks are important for growth as an artist? Oh, absolutely. I think I've learned more from things going wrong, from failures than from things going right. So once I think it's part of the process and I think, um, you know, you go to art school and you go to fashion school, but no one teaches you really how to run a business. And I don't think that's something you can really teach. It's something that you have to learn along the way. And, um, you know, I had my brand for five years and then I took a step back because I was just so burnt out. Um, and then restarting now over the last two or three years, I've taken um, a business partner with my sister. So I learned from my mistakes before about what I'm good at, which is the creative stuff, the business stuff, not so much. So I think if you can figure that out and figure out someone that you trust and that you can work well with to partner with, then that makes such a huge difference. Um, and I took time out to work in industry. So I learned loads from working for other brands in that time I took out. And, you know, I just think all those experiences and probably the stuff more that went wrong um, I think prepares you to kind of 
especially with corona and everything going on there you can't control some things sometimes so I think um, having a business you have to think on your feet you have to adapt um, and yeah you definitely I think learn more from your mistakes I would say to young people don't worry about <laughs> messing up failure is part of the process thank you so much for joining us in studio today it was really great to chat to you Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks a million. Sircha O'Rahala there joining us for our Creative Schools Week online celebration. Up next, we have Clons Hill National School County Galway with their performance Balancing Act. This was shot both in school and through Zoom from pupils' homes where they learned some cool circus skills from Stephen McGinley. That will be followed by Mercy School County Wexford with their poignant film end of an era where sixth class pupils reflect on their time in school. Who do that on their head? Give them a good squish. And if you want a million bonus points, it's to do a boon of boss under your legs. But I'm out already. <laughs> there and the and the little sticks right there and then you can move slowly very good lion oh wow and can we try actually like throwing it Obviously, keep the throw small so you don't break stuff. But just a little throw. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you want to keep the sticks lovely and close. That solves 90% of your problem straight away. So the sticks lovely and close. And then you're going to start with the Diablo on the floor on your right, if you're a right-hander. I think everyone here was a right-hander, so I'm just going to stick with that. But on your right, give it a wheel so that it's spinning and then right hand only. You can see that, and you have to do, you can take your hand off and catch it before it falls off, over. people uh, doing circus that is amazing brilliant oh yes that's it yeah oh so Dominic that is 100% perfect and who is um, Tiernan is flying that's great Nathan I'd say go for it a bit more you're ready <laughs> okay, we'll start again. You ready?
The best thing about Mercy is how everyone is so happy and kind. My best memory in the Mercy School was when I won my very first race on Sports Day. It would be when I won my first ever Sports Day medal doing the beanbag and bucket race in first class. Egg and spoon race. Uh, pretty sure I like, whacked someone in the head with the spoon. My earliest memory is whenever we were getting introduced to the school, I played with an abacus. My first memory here was probably playing with the Play-Doh. <laughs> One action! What are you going to miss in the Mercy School? I'm going to miss everything really. All the teachers and all my friends that won't be in the same school as me next year. I will miss all my friends and the teachers and the SNAs. In secondary school I'm looking forward to meeting new people and um, all the new classes. I'm looking forward to all the new subjects and having a locker. What is your favourite hobby outside of school? I like sewing because it's fun and I like to make my own things. Outside of school, my favourite hobbies would be athletics and sailing. Um, I like gymnastics because it's fun and you don't really think you're exercising because you're having fun at the same time. I play Gaelic, soccer and hurling. I play hurling for the canard. I like to sing and I like to meet up with my friends. I like scouting because I can go camping. Hobbies are football, uh, PS4 and probably just go and walk for my dog. I love to surf and I play Gaelic for Clinard volunteers and I also love reading. I like playing Kamogi, Gaelic football and soccer. I like Kung Fu because you get a lot of exercise in it and it's really fun. I like to bring my dogs for a walk. I like skateboarding because it just helps with my uh, balance and everything. My hobbies are cycling, dancing and walk my dogs. My hobby is soccer. I like sewing, reading, baking and I play the piano. Uh, I do boxing and I like football. I do soccer and tennis. Playing Gaelic, um, playing hurling and yeah that's it. Two, one, action. If you could be anything in the world, what would you be? I'd probably be a professional dancer because I just love dancing. My future plans would probably be to play Try Make County for Kamoki, Gaelic and Soccer. Well, my dream job would be to become a teacher. I would like to be a mechanic. Play Hurling with Wexford and I would like to be a sports journalist. If I was to do anything, I'd definitely win and I'll learn with McCampy. My future plans are to become an illustrator in the future. I would be either a doctor or a lawyer because I like helping people. If I could be anything, I'd be a screenplay writer for movies. I would um, work with dogs and help them find homes. I would like to be an architect. Uh, I would like to be a builder. My dream job is to be a guide. I see myself 20 years time in an, as an interior designer. I would like to be a sister because my dad is. I would like to be a cartoonist because I think I have a good art style. Uh, I would like to be a county Gaelic player. It would probably be an artist because I like drawing a lot. Probably a humanitarian because I love to travel and that job would let me travel all across the world. I would play for Man United if I could do anything. I would like to work at NASA because I'm interested in space. Probably an astronaut because like, then I could maybe um, be able to make my way up to Mars. Um, if I could be anything in the world, I would be an actor uh, or a soldier. Amazing submissions by Clans Hill National School and Mercy School. Bula bus morga holorana avi portsach. 
And now, our final performance for today features Killeen National School, County Galway, with their Jerusalem Dance Challenge. This involved the whole school, including the teachers. Some of it was filmed at home and out and about, so if you know the moves, join in. Jerusalem, I call me. I don't Jerusalem, I call me. I don't to Killeen National School. That looked like it was great fun and I'm exhausted just watching it. Well, what a show everyone. That's it for me for now, until next time. On behalf of Creative Schools, I'd like to thank everyone for all their hard work and their wonderful creations. Before we head off, all of us here from Creative Schools would like to give some special shout outs to some very special people the Creative Associates for their time and dedication in producing some fantastic workshops for us to partake in. Thank you to the artists and organisations for providing us with some great inside knowledge into their everyday role. Thank you to all the children and young people who took part and submitted such amazing entries. You deserve all the praise. A huge thank you to all our teachers for their dedication and support. Thank you all again for taking part with your amazing projects. That's it from all of us at Creative Schools Week online celebration. Have a fantastic week. Have some fun and celebrate. Make sure to share your photos and videos of your Creative Schools Week under the hashtag Creative Schools. Have a great one. August Fanagi Sloan. <laughs>